Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules 153 here with another Dreams Logic tutorial. Today we'll be looking at how to make a 2D camera that automatically adjusts itself to fit in multiple players. You can see that as the character walks away from the center of the screen, that the camera adjusts its field of view to fit them in. It's all calculated live, so it doesn't matter how fast you run, the effect will just happen more quickly. We'll go through this setup in just a moment, but for now we'll just concentrate on the camera gadget and how you'd set this up. So initially we'd need to find the maximum zoom out distance we want the camera to have. We'll duplicate this camera here so it doesn't mess with the settings on the one that's currently working. Once you've got your scene and you've got the camera in a position that you want it in, you can jump into the camera edit mode with the tweak menu open and find the maximum field of view that you want. To find this, we just increase the field of view slider until we can see the entire level or until you can see everything that you want in your scene. In this case, 100 degrees is what we'll go with, but this will be individual to your own level. So for this to work, we'll need to find out a couple of things. We'll need to find out how far away each player is from the center of the camera, and which player is the furthest from the center. For this, we've got a tag in the center of the camera view so that we've got a defined center that the puppets can look for. We've got two puppets here, and each of them has a microchip on it with a laser scope and a transmitter. The laser scopes are looking for the sensor tag with the look at option turned on. You can see that if we open up the scope, that it's pointing directly from above the puppet's head to the sensor tag. On the outputs page, there's an option for the hit distance, which outputs how far away the object the scope is hitting is. The number displays on the sides of the screen are outputting the distance in meters from the center, and the number display down the bottom of the screen is the signal that's being sent to the camera field of view. You can see that if we move the character away from the center tag, the laser scope hit distance changes on the left. This distance is being transmitted from the puppet and is being picked up by the receiver over on the main chip. We've got two receivers, one for each player, so we can get the distance each player is from the center. Now that we've got our player's distance from the center of the screen, we need to get the distance for the player that's furthest away from the center tag. For that, we've just got a calculator that's set to output the maximum of the two receivers that are plugged into it. This chip here has the three number displayers on it, so you can ignore this one. This is just there so that we can see the signals that are being outputted. Now the signal manipulator is the gadget that makes all of this work properly. It has some incredibly useful features like thresholds that make all this possible. We've got it set to the custom remapper option, which lets us change the minimum and maximum inputs and outputs. We've got the signal tweak set to clamp values, which will constrain the gadget to only take inputs and transmit outputs within signal ranges that we tell it. We have our maximum zoom out distance set from before, which is set to 100 degrees. When this slider gets a signal of 100%, it'll be at 100. We've got the output thresholds on the right hand side of the signal manipulator graph. The maximum output is set to 1 or 100%, so that's going to be the maximum signal that's going into the camera field of view slider. To get the default zoom, we change the minimum output value. If we don't have a set minimum, the camera's field of view slider will be at zero degrees and you'll have a very zoomed camera. At the moment, the minimum is a 55% signal. So the slider will be set to 55% of 100 degrees, which is just 55 degrees. If we wanna change our default zoom distance, we can just change the minimum output and that will be the new default. You can see that it's changing the camera field of view slider when I change this minimum setting. We now need to work out how far away the players need to be from the sensor tag for the camera to start moving out. By jumping into camera edit mode, we can adjust the player to the spot where we think it should start zooming out. This will mean that the camera will be at its default zoom until the character is this far away from the center. You can see that when the character is about three and a half meters away, that's when we should start zooming out our camera to make sure they don't go off the screen. You can see on the input side of the graph, 
that we've got our minimum inputs at the 3.5. So while the player is less than 3.5 meters away, the signal manipulator will output its default, which is 55%. To work out the maximum distance the player can be from the center of the screen, we'll need to jump back into camera edit mode. Place the character as far right as you can without them being out of the frame. For this case, you can see when the character is at the edge of the frame that they're about 9 meters away. This 9 meters is going to be our signal manipulator's maximum input. You can see that our maximum input threshold is at about 9 meters. So when the character is 9 meters away from the center of the screen, the camera will stop zooming out. You can see that while both characters are within 3.5 meters of the center tag, the camera is staying at its default zoom. As we start to walk away from the center, you can see the input signal on the graph slowly rising towards our minimum input threshold. As soon as we hit that threshold of 3.5 meters, you can see that the output starts to increase from its default 55%, increasing the more that we move away from the center. It'll continue to increase until we reach our input maximum of 9 meters, where it'll stop zooming out the camera. It doesn't matter how fast you move, the camera will adjust itself with the signals to keep the character on the screen. Finally, because we're getting the maximum distance of the two players from the center of the screen, the camera will automatically adjust to whichever player is the furthest from the center. This setup would work for as many players as you could have in a game. That's all for this one guys, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.